In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of timers and counters. In many cases when working with microcontrollers, you'll need to use what are called counters. When programming microcontrollers and making them work properly, sometimes counters are needed. And counters are connected directly to the clock source of the microcontroller. The microcontroller has an oscillator that's built in. And in this specific microcontroller, the default oscillation is at 8 megahertz, which is 8 million pulses per second. If you've been watching the, the LCD series, you know that there's already a place where I needed to use a counter because I had a time delay that was built in so the LCD would be able to wait long enough, or actually the microcontroller was able to wait long enough for the LCD to do whatever it needed to do to end its busy state. But we simply used a, a loop just to make it pause for a certain time frame. But that time frame was very inexact. It was not exactly what the data sheet called for. So in those cases, you might want to use the timers and counters because they're based on a specific value of oscillation within the microcontroller. That is to say, you can actually get the perfect timing that you need to match data, data sheet specifications. If the data sheet calls for a pause for 100 microseconds, then you'd be able to specify 100 microseconds as a pause. In these timing and counting videos, or timers and counters, I'll be getting into the internal oscillator specifically, and I'm going to be focusing on that for the next several videos. And these videos will be rather short, just demonstrating various features in the timers and counters. We'll be getting into just basic counting with a prescaler. We'll be getting into input capture, which is bringing in a pulse and measuring the width of the pulse. We'll get into measuring the widths of the PWM signal coming in. And we can also output a PWM signal with specific periods and duty cycles. I want to make these videos short because they work better as a reference. So you can call up any video that meets your needs and you can program in that specific feature if you want to. So let's go ahead and start with the first feature. I'm going to simply create a program that all it does is it counts to the maximum value that it has. And I'm going to change the prescaler to different values to see what actually happens with the speed at which this counts. When you're counting, you can count with a prescaler. The prescaler, all it does is it skips a specified number of oscillations in the internal CPU because the oscillations, you're, you're oscillating at 8 million times per second, and that's a lot. And you might not want to have, you might not want to count at that same speed. You might want to slow it down. So we can skip some of those oscillations and have it count, let's say for every 1000 internal oscillations, it counts one and then another 1000 in internal oscillations and it gets the number two. 1000 oscillations gets the number three. In this specific demonstration I'm showing you here, the prescaler is at 1000 and you can see how fast it is counting up to 65,535, which is the maximum amount or the maximum for a 16-bit binary number. The counter register that holds this number is only a 16-bit register. Okay, let's create a new project. And I'll use this project for all of the timer and counter demonstrations. We have the F030R8T6 new project. I'm going to call this timers and counters. Finish. Okay, let's add our components. We know we need the kubelib. Okay, and the kubelib comes with the CMSIS core, as we know. Let's go back. Uh, let's, I went back too far. Components. All right, so we, st we also need the C library, I believe so we can make some of the functions in the LCD functions work. Okay, I think that's it. 
So we can go into our main C. We also need to put in our LCD functions into the, the specific folder. And if you go into your, us your users, the name of your user that you use, co-ide, and under workspace, that's where you have all of the, the projects. So we've just created timers and counters. And let me get the, I'll get the tutorial, um, the LCD functions out of the last tutorial we made. And that's under app. You can see LCD functions here. I'm going to copy, go back to workspace, timers and counters, app, and we'll paste it. And this should show up when I restart this, this project. We'll find out. The other thing we need to do is go into the components because there's that error that we have to keep fixing. And it's under the kubelib. Under the test, you'll notice that there's a conf.h. We're going to copy that into the source. We'll paste it here. Okay. So that's all we should have to do. So let's go ahead and include the LCD functions. Dot h. Let's see if it builds. Okay. It says that our GPI, GPIO A is undeclared. We have GPIO C, B. And that's because we didn't include our main file here for the actual chip. What is that name? I can't remember. STM32F0XX.H. So that, that holds all of the registers and other information for the chip that we're using. STM. S. I misspelled it. STM. So the first thing we need to do always when we're using the LCD is to initialize. And we're going to set up the display. Now we're ready to use the LCD. In this program, we're going to use the timer one, TIM1. So let's get our reference manual and check out what we have to do. So the first thing we need to make sure is that the the advanced peripheral bus has the timer enabled. So let's take a look and see if we can find the the APP APB two ENR. And within that within that register, you'll see that we have some of the timers enable switches. The one we're going to be using is time one enable, which is bit number 11. And the time one is to the advanced control timer. And the advanced control timer and the general timers are very similar. But we'll get into more of that later on. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you'll see that in the timer one advanced control timer is a 16 bit auto reload counter. And it has and it allows you to use a programmable prescaler. And generally, most of the timers are, about, are very similar. And we'll get more into what the differences are later in these um, tutorials. But let's start off really simple and just use a counter and prescaler. So first, we need to enable this timer. So we're using the clock control register and the APB2 to ENR. We're going to make sure we enable the time one. The timer one enable. With a timer, you have a register that holds the actual counter number. And that is called the TIM X CNT for counter. And the X can be replaced with the actual timer number. And in this case, we're using counter or timer one. With a prescaler of zero or no prescaler, the oscillator can be looking like would look like this. The market controller is constantly creating a pulse. And these pulses happen eight million times per second. So for each pulse, the counter with a with no prescaler the actual counter register will have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
all the way to 65,535, which is 65,536 positions. And this conforms to a 16-bit binary number. However, when we're counting up and trying to show this counter on the LCD, you're, it's going to go by so fast that you won't be able to see the numbers. You're, you're just going to see all these five digits just with a haze. It'll be just blurry and you won't understand what number it's on because it's just going too fast. In fact, it'll probably count up to 65,535 more than 100 times before it actually gets to the 8, 8 million in one second. So that's where the prescaler comes in. So if we said the prescaler, we're going we're gonna to shorten this to PSC. And that allows us to skip some of these oscillations. So let's say the oscillator, the prescaler is, is equal to 2. The prescaler has its own little counter, and it starts with 0. 1 and 2, 0, 1, and 2. So every time that it gets to 2, the counter will change. So, so in this scenario, with the prescaler 2, the counter will have 0 here, and then 1 here. Let's go on just a little bit more. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two, and three. So the counter will skip, will count on every third pulse. So you have three pulses because it starts at, a, at indexed at zero, one, two, and starts again, zero, one, two, and it'll count for every three pulses of the oscillator. In the example that I showed in the introduction of this video, I had the prescaler at 1000. So it'll actually skip 1000 of these oscillations before it gets to the next counter number. So for every 1000 oscillations, it'll count one. Another 1000 oscilla oscillations, and it'll get to two. The oscillations stay at, at a constant speed. It's eight million oscillations per second. But by skipping 1000 of them, that means you have a lot more time between the counts. So it's essentially slowing it down by increasing your prescaler. Prescalers are sometimes difficult to understand when it's being written in a data sheet. But really, if you think about it, prescalers are very, very simple. And a lot of features of microcontrollers, not necessarily this particular microcontroller, the prescaler is only allowed to be a specific number like 2, 4, 8, 16. They're really confused as a programmer. But it really doesn't need to. I mean, it's as simple as just skipping oscillations. So you don't have to think of it as anything more difficult than that. So let's get back to the program. So the next thing we need to do is set up the prescaler. To access the prescale register, we're just going to use time1. That's going to be our main register for our advanced control timer, and the PSC is the prescaler register. And we're just going to make it equal to whatever number we want. And in this case, we'll make it equal to, I'm going to make it 10,000 this time. So it'll show a little bit slower on the LCD. And inside the loop, we'll access the timer one, the CNT register. And all that does is it stores the, the actual count Let's make this a comment for now because we need to show it on the LCD. So let's put some LCD stuff in here so we can show what we're trying to, or make it very descriptive what we're trying to do. We'll send two lines with a, a zero delay and we'll put on the first line the counter, colon. And on the next line we'll put in prescaler. We don't have anything on the LCD at the moment, so I'm just going to keep it short here. We don't have to erase anything. So we'll display the prescaler that we're using. We'll set the cursor location for the second line, 
the x is zero. Well, x is going to be let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm going to use eleven, and then it's going to be the second line, which is one, and inside the loop. We'll set the cursor location. And it's going to be the first line, but it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10, and it's going to be on the first line. And we'll send an integer. And the integer we're looking for is the time 1 counter. And we'll make it 5 digits because it can't go up above 65,535. Let's see if we have a working program. And it doesn't look like it built correctly. Ah, I forgot the two in the APB. All right, that worked. See if we can find it. Yeah, time one. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and build it again, see if it works. And I think we're ready to flash the microcontroller. It's currently showing the previous one that I had, so it should show 10,000 in the prescaler. So let's go ahead and flash the microcontroller and see if it works. And it did not work, and I think I know why. Let me take a look here. I forgot to actually enable the counter within the timer one control register. And the CEN is the bit that actually enables the counter. Counter disabled and counter enabled. So we need to enable the counter. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put that right after the RCC. It's timer 1, control register 1. And we're going to, or equals, we're going to put a 1 in the, in the bit for the enabling the counter. So let's try this again. Let's do a build and flash the microcontroller. Okay, now it works. But we didn't get the prescaler on there for some reason. Let's see why. Oh, I didn't actually send it, send the string. I just positioned it and that's it. LCD, send a string. I know, I want to send an integer. Send an integer. All right, and the integer is going to be the time one PSC. And I'll make it five digits again as well. So let's build and then flash again. <clears throat> okay, we can see that the 10,000 is in this space. So let's start playing with this number. Let's change the value of prescaler to different values and see what happens with this number. You can see it's go moving up relatively slowly, but for every 10,000 oscillations, it is counting up each digit. So let's try the maximum number, 65,535. Okay, you can see that it's going up far slower it's going to take quite a long time to get up to the 65,535 on the counter. So you can see what a difference the prescaler makes on the counter. So let's try changing the number to just zero and see what we see. It should go so fast that we won't be able to see it. So you can see now it's just a blur. I mean, it, you can see it changing and you, it's pretty obvious that we're not going to be able to get every single digit on this LCD because the LCD works very, very slow. So you're, it's going to be skipping a whole bunch of digits, but it's just going to be putting it, putting at whatever the counter is at that particular time when the LCD is not busy. And even if you had um, a, a camera that could take that can do ultra slow motion. The, the LCD would be just phasing in and out with transparency. So you wouldn't really see the digits that way either.
But you can see how fast it is it is moving between 0 and 65,535. So let's try another prescaler and we'll go with um, 500. Let's see if we can actually see the numbers change or discern that is at least going in upwards motion or um, upwards counting. Okay, at 500 you can start to see it moving. Yeah, you can see that it's the numbers are counting up. So let's go a little bit farther down and try 100 and see if we can still see it. Um, yeah, you can still see it. So I'll conclude the video on that. I hope this gives you a good sense of how to use the counter or at least how to access the counter for the timer one and how to understand the prescaler, which is should be a very simple concept to understand. By increasing the prescaler, you are increasing the number of oscillations you're ignoring on the microcontroller. And by decreasing the prescaler, you're using more of the oscillations within the microcontroller. So I hope that helps. Thank you for watching.